This is Warren Drosher, who, along with his friend Thomas Brigg, was able to invent the coolest chemistry demonstration reaction on the planet. This is the Briggs Rosher reaction, and today I will try to recreate it. This is me trying to mix some chemicals with no previous experience or any special knowledge. So, wish me luck, please. So, let me tell you beforehand, this is not a safe reaction. It involves the use of sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide. So, you should wear gloves and goggles while handling the reactants. The materials required are just the kitchen scale, it does not have to be too accurate, petri dish, malonic acid, potassium iodate, manganese sulfate, cornstarch, gloves and goggles as I previously mentioned. All these glass instruments, they cannot be plastic because sulfuric acid is also involved and it heats things up very quickly. You also require hydrogen peroxide and a bunch of distilled water. So let's start. First, we have to add around 300 milliliters of fresh distilled water. This will be the first part of solution A. To this, we have to add about 200 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. I will be making 500 milliliters of each solution. So, uh, we have to mix them afterwards in equal amounts. For now, we are done with solution A. So for the briggs rosher reaction, actually, we have to prepare three colorless solutions to mix them in equal amounts. We are done here with the first solution and I will just pour it in the first container labeled as A for convenience. In my opinion, solution A is the easiest to make because you just have to dilute 30% hydrogen peroxide and you have to just mix the distilled water and hydrogen peroxide properly. And you are done. For solution B, we require potassium iodide. So I am measuring it. I want 21 grams, but the kitchen scale is very inaccurate. So I might have to just trust my instincts and go ahead with it. To a beaker with 498 milliliters of distilled water. I will add 21 grams of potassium iodate. It is very important to stir it properly till it completely dissolves. This might take a while but eventually it will become colorless. I am going to make 500 milliliters of each solution but the quantities can easily be scaled. Next, add about 2 milliliters of sulfuric acid. It is very important to be careful while measuring this. This is a previously broken test tube and have used it because it has just about 2 milliliters of markings. Now, I will mix these chemicals together and basically that's all solution B is also done. I will pour this solution in the container B. And we can move on to make the last solution now. Solution C will take us the most time. To another beaker, I add about 450 milliliters of distilled water. Now I add about 8 grams of malonic acid. For this, I will have to measure it first. And I am doing this on a petri dish on a weighing scale, which may be very inaccurate, but it's fine for this reaction. Now 
Later, I used kitchen science and just poured in all the melonic acid, which dissolved very quickly. So next, I put approximately 2 grams of manganese sulfate in the 450 milliliters of distilled water and malonic acid and I stirred it strongly. Next, I took 0.2 grams of cornstarch and added it to about 55 milliliters of distilled water. Later, I brought it to a boil. Now I added it to the earlier solution that we had already prepared and now we should be done with the solution C. It took an extremely long time to mix this properly but I was finally done and it is time to pack this in and time for the fun part now. So let me add this to the container C and let's move on. So I added all of them in equal proportions and tried to find out what the result would be. I was extremely unsatisfied with my result. I thought I must have messed up the proportions. So I tried adding more C and B solutions. But to no avail. They were changing colors way too slowly. I was really, really sad. I even tried shaking it and I thought that it was all over. But then suddenly, it started changing colors. I tried doing this again and somehow the results were even more satisfactory. But it was real fun when I took all the three solutions in the beaker and mixed them together. It was extremely fun to watch this continuously change colors and I think this was really cool. So that's basically it for the video. If you enjoyed watching this, please remember to like, share, subscribe by.